Hello, my name is Oscar Perez, and this is my presentation on the BTK killer. Origin of case. This case originated in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, murders occurred from 1974 to 1991. The investigation opened in 1974 and closed in 2005. Case details. Following are the murder victims. Joseph, age 38, and Julie, age 33, last name Otero, and their two children were suffocated, strangled, and hung in 1974. Catherine Bright, age 21, was stabbed 11 times a few months later in the same year. Shirley Byan, 24, and Nancy Fox, 25, were strangled in two separate murders in 1977. Case details continued here. Marine Hedge, 53, strangled in 1985. Vicky Weggerly, 28, strangled in 1986. The last victim, Dolores Davis, 62, strangled in 1991. Case discovery. Nicknamed BTK killer for his acts of murder. BTK stands for bind, torture, and kill. Uh, discovered via BTK killer himself going and taunting the local media and law enforcement using messages, all hints or directives on how he killed his uh, victims here. Case investigation. Law enforcement received taunting letters, newspaper ads, notes, library books, and TV stations were also used as messengers by the BTK killer. Law enforcement had no fingerprints, no eyewitnesses, no leads, and the case eventually went cold after the last victim. Uh, communication from the BTK killer once again resumed in 2004. Uh, local uh, police and locals from the town all thought that the BTK killer had either died from old age or was arrested on other crimes unrelated to the murders. Uh, but that was not the case. The BTK killer was able to go ahead and resume his communications uh, with the locals in 2004 using the exact same ta uh, taunting tactics that he did before. Case investigation continued here. It was a package containing a letter crime scene photos, and a driver's license from Vicky Weggerly. That was one of his victims back in 1986. Once this package had arrived, the local enforcement went ahead and reopened the case. Law enforcement collected DNA from under the victim's fingernails and launched a campaign to test hundreds of local men in hopes to find a match. Uh, the BTK killer was caught on surveillance one, one day he was using a drop-off point to deliver another package, uh, but unfortunately, the surveillance was blurry. The only thing that was identifiable was the vehicle that the uh, killer was driving. Uh, connections between the BTK killer and the black Jeep Cherokee were established. Uh, packages and messages continued to arrive to media outlets from the BTK killer. Uh, one message wanting to know if floppy disks uh, communication was secure and untraceable. Uh, he put his hopes in with the law here. Um, law enforcement went ahead and were instructed via that package um, to respond via classified ad in the paper with the message, Rex, it'll be okay. This went ahead and let uh, the BTK killer know that floppy disks were uh, able to be used as communication and were not traceable. Um, so due to this, the BTK killer went ahead and sent a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk to the local Fox TV affiliates. The floppy disk was sent uh, and it contained instructions for the law enforcement agents. So like I said, this was his way of communicating with them um, anonymously as he thought it was untraceable.
Computer forensic experts uh, were contacted to analyze the piece of technology. Uh, what they found was metadata embedded uh, contained a deleted Microsoft Office document. It was an RTF file found that read, this is a test. The file was last accessed in local and in the local Christ, Christ Lutheran Church and Park City Community Public Library. File was last edited by Dennis. Uh, they did not have a last name, they just had a first name. But using the locations, um, law enforcement was able to track down a suspect, and that was Dennis Rader. Moving from there, they went ahead and got a warrant to test Raider's daughter's DNA. They wanted to match, see if this DNA matched the DNA that they had previously found in Vicki Wegerly's case. And the DNA results revealed a familial match. Um, also, Raider was investigated and he did in fact have a black Jeep Cherokee. Uh, so using that name, the location, the DNA, and the a vehicle, it went ahead and arrested Raider on February 25th, 2005. Uh, Raider realizes the mistake he made and utters the famous words, the floppy did me in. Raider then admits to all 10 murders eventually. I say this because initially he rejected all claims of uh, being the killer. Uh, but eventually did admit to killing all 10 uh, people listed earlier today. Uh, so he went ahead and provided hours of details surrounding the murders to the law enforcement. Uh, now Raider resides in Kansas, El Dorado Correctional Facility, and his release date has been set for February 26, 2180. Little background on Raider here. Uh, he was married father of two, an Air Force veteran, church council president, Cub Scout, majored in criminal justice, and code enforcement officer for Park City. So he had quite the background here. Computer forensic techniques. Uh, in this case, in-case software by Guidance Software was used in the investigation. Uh, this software is primarily used to examine, recover, and analyze uh, digital hardware. Um, in this case, the computer forensic experts were able to fully utilize the software. So they were able to check down that deleted Microsoft Office file and uh, see who was the last person to edit that pretty easily. Uh, challenges during the investigation. Law enforcement investigators used every drop of possible evidence, yet were unable to gather any basic information about who the killer may be. Uh, they failed to gather any basic evidence <coughs> And eventually that led to a cold case. Uh, back when they reopened the case in 2004, they launched that campaign to match DNA to Wegerly, the murder victim. And that, la that campaign proved to be, uh, failed to generate any type of results. Result of investigation. So digital forensics played a crucial role in this case. And because of this, Dennis Schrader now has to serve 10 consecutive life sentences for the admitted murders. Interesting facts that I found while doing my research here, uh, computer forensic specialists, they really did not have to try very hard. Um, it was stated that extensive investigation of digital evidence and vast expertise in the computer forensic field was not required. That's just something I thought it was interesting that a murderer for over 30 years um, was easily able to be caught with uh, just the computer forensic specialists were able to catch him fairly easy with that floppy disk that he went ahead and delivered to the uh, local cops. Um, so here again, explaining my point, a high profile case that spanned over 30 years was solved within nine days of receiving that floppy disk drive. So that really just proves the point that that floppy disk drive really did seal the deal, seal his fate there.
lessons learned. Uh, technology is evolving and is becoming more sophisticated. I believe that's the case and it will continue to be the case in the years to come. Fingerprints and DNA, they're not the only objects needed anymore. So other digital objects that can be used in cases nowadays are emails, digital messages, digital photos, devices connected to any network, they can always be tracked. So there's quite a bit of ways to be caught if someone is investigating you. Uh, lessons learned continued here. Law enforcement relies more and more on computer forensics. I believe that to be the case uh, for the future years to come as well. Computer audits and investigations are now used to crack criminal cases. Uh, the 21st century, I believe, is a nightmare for any murderers or anybody that's willing to go against the law and, and uh, attempting to cheat the justice system. And here are my works cited. And that concludes my PowerPoint.